What you hear matters. The things people say to you, it, it comes into your mind and it alters the way you view, the way you see, the way you think. And that's something we need to talk about today. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Burns and thank you so much for joining me on Walking with the Word. We've got an excellent program ahead of us today because we're going to talk about something that affects you and it affects me, but in different ways, but at the same time, as we talk about this matter. I want to remind you that you can be a huge part of our program. A large number of people have already been a part of this and we want you to be a part of this as well. And maybe you've already done this before and you've thought of something new you'd like to add to our program in the scheme of topics. But go to our website, www.twtv.org, click on the survey tab, and there you can see more about what we do in this program and how you can be an integral part of our program here on Walking with the Word. Our subject today is a watered down gospel. That's something that affects you and it affects me. It affects you as a hearer and me as a hearer. But it also affects me as a presenter in what it means to look at the gospel, lay out some type of message, and be true to the text as we see things form in our minds together. How I want us to divide this out is in two simple views. Number one, I want you to think about the gospel view. And then number two, I want you to think about the needed view. And the gospel view is rather simple. The gospel mandates certain things we need to know. And then there is the needed view, some application that we need to make as we consider thinking about our lives and thinking about the things that we do. Number one, I want you to think about a passage. And it's a passage where Jesus is speaking and Jesus gives us some crucial information about the way we view him and what we need to know about him. It's John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is having this interaction with his disciples, his closest, and, and one has just asked the question, how can we know where you're going? And Jesus reminds him, you've heard everything from me. I have taught you. I have been with you. I have shown you. And he says, there's no way you can make it to the Father unless you follow through with me. When it comes to the gospel, there's something we need to consider. We need to recognize that Jesus is the author of truth. It's not just John 14, 6 that talks about Jesus as the author of truth, but it's other passages. Hebrews 5, 8, and 9. Jesus became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. He is the author of truth. So number one in our thought today of thinking about what happens when the gospel is watered down we need to recognize, number one, there is a standard of truth and the words of Jesus, they need to be our standard. But what happens? How does it take place? What happens when the gospel is watered down? Well, here's something we can know and we can learn this from Paul as he writes to the Galatians, as he gives them some, some things they needed to know. And what's interesting to me is he writes to them and he says, you guys have a problem. Uh, listen to Galatians 1, 6, and 7. Paul writes, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. It was in this time, the time of Paul and the time of which he was writing, that there were some who were perverting the gospel. Uh, they were changing the message of Jesus. They were changing the message that had been declared. And we learned that that message that had been changed was not another of the same kind. It was another of a different kind. In other words, we learned something about preaching here from Paul in Galatians 1, 6, and 7. We preach the same kind of message Jesus preached. That's another of the same kind. What that means is myself as a preacher and, and you as a student and, and me as a student, we study the gospel and we follow the gospel. We don't change it into something I would like, into something that the world would like, but, but it is another of the same kind. I don't use the same exact words Jesus used. I don't use the same exact illustrations that Jesus used. But it's my job as a preacher, as someone who is presenting the gospel, to put this into terms that we can relate to. With analogies that we can see in our lives. 
A lot has changed in our world. We don't do things the same way as the world has always done. You don't light a candle in the room, do you? You turn on the light switch. You don't walk everywhere you go. You travel in different ways. And we teach the same gospel of the same kind. But there were some in the day of Paul, not far removed in the time of Christ, where the gospel has been perverted to another of a different kind. The message is now different. That's a watered-down gospel, ladies and gentlemen. It's an altered gospel, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe we make it say things less of what Christ said. Maybe we say, oh, that's not really that big of a deal. Jesus wouldn't worry about that. You see, the gospel can be altered. That's the idea I have for us as we study today and think about what's taking place. Now, Paul also reminds these people, as we see in Galatians 1, 6, and 7, there's this gospel that's different. He says you can't follow it, but remember he told you, I'm so marveled that you're so removed. They had been bothered with it, which means they've got to come back to the true gospel. But listen to what he says in the next two verses, 8 and 9. But if we, Paul, anyone with him, anyone in the church, or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what, we have, than what you have received, let him be accursed. In other words, there's not many gospels. I can't preach more than Christ preached. I cannot preach less than Christ preached. I cannot study more than Christ gave. I cannot study less than Christ gave. I must follow the words of Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And if the Apostle Paul were alive today, if he contradicted Christ, let him be accursed. If any of those who were associated with Paul, I think about Titus and Timothy, his sons in the faith, if they were alive today and they preached anything different, here's what Paul said, let him be accursed. If an angel from heaven, now there are some people who will uh, kind of study and, and try to see what that might have been, but let's just take it literal word for word. What if an angel from heaven comes down today and teaches something opposite of Christ? Then it is a gospel of another kind. And the one who is teaching should be accursed, should no longer be able to teach, should no longer be able to continue. Why? Because it's not the gospel of which Christ preached that they're presenting to others. That tells me there is a standard of living, of preaching, of teaching, of studying, a standard of Scripture. And notice what Paul says next. For now, do I persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. It's Paul here who says, who are we going to serve? Who are we going to try to please? Is it God that we're going to serve? Kind of reminds me of Joshua 24, 15. Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve man? You've got to choose this day whom you will serve. Paul says, if I'm going to serve men, if I'm going to go the ways of mankind, then I can't serve Christ. He says, I can no longer be the bond servant of Christ. I can't be in chains anymore, bound to Christ. And there's where we get an idea of an essence, something we need to see. Are we bound to Christ? You see, Christ is the only one that we need to focus on. He's the one that we need to follow. He's the one that we need to be. He's the one that needs to be taught. And his teaching should shine through. Not mine, not yours, not our opinions, not the world's. That's what matters. And matter of fact, listen to what Paul said about those who teach against the gospel of Christ. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses. Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. And I want you to know some passages. Acts 15, 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13. 2 Peter 2, 1 and 2. And 2 John 1, 7 through 9. All have the same exact context. If one is against the gospel of Christ, then he cannot continue. He, he is not who he should be. He should not speak. You see, the gospel view of a watered-down gospel is there can only be one. So we cannot have a watered-down gospel. 
But number two, as we move from the gospel view, I want you to see the needed view. And what I want to share with you is an illustration that I like to say when I'm preaching and teaching in various ways. I'm not your spoon. I'm not your spoon. I didn't bring a spoon so that you could open your mouth and I carefully lay in something you need to hear. There is a responsibility of every person alive to hear the gospel, to study the gospel, and to put it into their lives. You need to be a part. But let's see three views that are connected to that in that very idea. Number one, we need Bible preaching. Acts 20, 27. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. It was Paul here talking to the elders of that particular area, and he said, I've given it to you all. Now, one thing I like to do is I keep an Excel spreadsheet. And I have all of my classes and all of my sermons and mornings and nights and all of the things that I'm going to teach, programs such as this and and other things that I might write and do. I keep a spreadsheet so I can see that as I'm teaching, I'm being uniform to declare all, not just some, but all of the gospel. Here's a truth. The Bible's huge. And it may take some time to cycle through those things But what we need is biblical preaching, not just on certain subjects, on all things of which we do. We need to immerse our lives inside the Bible, and we do that through preaching. Not only that, we need Bible living. Bible living. 1 John 4, 4, you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. I encourage you to go study 1 John 4, 4, and you'll find... That in the context of that chapter, as the previous chapter comes to a close and as this chapter continues to open up, there are those who are teaching things contrary to the gospel of Christ. There are those who have changed and watered down the gospel in various ways. We need Bible living. And he says, little children. That's my favorite phrase from 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Little children. He says, you have overcome them. Why? Because the one that's in you, Christ, is greater. Stick to Christ. Stay a part of the vine. Be in Him. Because without that, we cannot have Bible living. We need Bible preaching. We need Bible living. We need, listen to this one, Bible thinking. Listen to 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient, with all. I want you to see a couple of things and we'll go back to this passage as we're in it here in this particular scene. But, but I want you to notice this. We exhort you brethren. Who's he talking to? He's not talking to the world who does not believe. He's talking to you as a Christian and me as a Christian. And he tells us in this particular scene, warn those who are unruly. Now we know, it's, know what it's like when our children get out of hand. Can that happen to us as adults? Can we become unruly? Sometimes we can. And I want you to see this word. Warn them. Bring them back. Help them understand. You'll see why I'm using that terminology in just a moment. Warn the unruly. Comfort the faint-hearted. There are times in life when we are faint-hearted. All of us. There's, There's not a person who will never go through life as strong as a man. That might be a terminology we might have used. But no one's going to be as strong as they wish they were. And sometimes we're faint-hearted. We need comfort. We also see in this thing, uphold the weak. Sometimes we're weak. We try to be strong, but, but we're weak. And then he says this, be patient with all. In Bible thinking, we need some patience. Not everyone is going to do exactly what they should, when they should, how they should. Now, especially when we start thinking about how we think they should and how we think they should say and how we think they should, there's a problem there too. But we're not perfect people. And we're told here in this scenes that we are to exhort one another to be patient. Why? To bring one another where we need to be. You see, the gospel's view is there's only one gospel. There's not a watered-down gospel. But the needed view is we're going to get up. We're going to study it. We're going to study it together. We're going to study it by ourselves. We're going to study it as families. 
And we're going to have the right view because going to heaven, it matters. I'm so glad today that you've taken time to be with me. I appreciate your time. And I want to remind you, you can go be a part of our survey. Go take that website and, and click on that survey tab and, and be a part of this program and, and help us by sharing this program and spreading it to others. The, the greatest way this program is viewed is if you click that share button and you share it today. But I appreciate you being with me and I appreciate you spending time with me today on Walking with the Word.